Hi everybody. This is a very nice basic two-point perspective drawing of a building. However, notice how the details that have been added, such as window, door, sidewalk, fence, are currently quite flat. So I'm going to show you how you can add three-dimensional detail to those various elements to take this drawing up a level. Basically, this is where, where, where you want to end up. You want to have a drawing in which the uh, roof has relative thickness, the windows have window sills, the doorways have entryways, the sidewalk has some depth and dimension, as well as the fence having three-dimensional detail. So I'm going to show you how to do some of these kinds of things. Uh, let's start with the sidewalk. Go ahead and get just a lighter colored gray here to draw my guidelines in. So um, currently, like I said, the sidewalk uses horizontal convergence quite nice. However, you could add additional depth to it by creating some volume. So the idea behind creating volume with any of these kinds of details is that you want to think about them as um, perspective shapes. So there are um, elements that are uh, kind of like basic rectangular prisms. So the, each of the pieces of the sidewalk is a rectangular prism. Okay. It's a very flat and it's a very um, uh, flat rectangular prism that doesn't have a great deal of vertical rise to it. But nonetheless, it's a shape drawn in perspective. Now the same kind of principle applies to details such as the windows and doors. So with the doorway, for example, and the window, think of those elements as basically um, small boxes that are being that are kind of carving themselves into the larger box that is being the the um, larger building, right? So you're adding um, a level of depth. And if I were to continue this shape, you know, we could continue the shape beyond what is seen here. We could add um, the depth and dimension for this internal wall here as well. But there's no point really in drawing that since we know that that aspect is hidden from view, um, assuming we're drawing uh, a building that is opaque or solid and not transparent. So all you need to do is think about what parts of the uh, box are going to be seen by the viewer, and that depends on what is below and what is above the horizon line, of course. In the case of the window on the left-hand side, the window starts out below the horizon line, but finishes up above the horizon line. So we are going to see the inside um, window ledge, and we're also going to see a little sliver of the upper um, inside part of the window ledge. Now, the depth is something that you can just sort of decide arbitrarily to begin with, with a vertical line that kind of indicates um, how thick that wall is. And then, again, you take lines going to that corner that's now been created. So it's basically drawing a very small rectangular prism that fits within the larger rectangular prism of the building itself. And I'm leaving the guidelines in left lightly so that I can darken the lines with uh, a darker line. Now, one thing that you'll probably want to additionally do to help uh, avoid confusion when doing this is to periodically erase your guidelines if they're starting to get in the way. Some, oftentimes you'll find that it's easier to see your drawing if you, oops, if you actually, um, okay, for some reason it's wanting me to dark, draw a dark color, and I really just want a nice white color. I have the wrong tool selected, that's the problem. Okay, so sorry about that, just trying to erase the guidelines here so that uh, your composition comes into focus. You're more than welcome to do that. Notice how I'm leaving the guidelines left in beyond the edges of the composition. So this larger gray rectangle defines the edges of my composition. That's the format of my drawing. 
that's the edges of my drawing. So I've placed the vanishing points outside of the edges on purpose to create more natural angles and also to allow for those guidelines, bits of guidelines to sort of um, be seen beyond those that format. Okay, so just cleaning up things a little bit to show how you can um, erase those guidelines. Let's move on now to the fence. Uh, in the fence, you're going to add depth to it by using the right-hand vanishing point here, and I'm just going to do it for one of these fence posts. I'm not going to do all of them. But essentially, you want to think of each post as being a rectangular prism. It's a really tall, skinny rectangular prism in this case, and then it's intersected by yet another rectangular prism. A lot of things in perspective can be thought about in terms of building blocks. You know, you just dissect the shapes into almost Lego pieces. You can think about it that way in terms of the visual, uh, how to visualize what you're doing. And that will help you get an idea of how you're using perspective as though you would use building blocks to construct something in three dimensions. So here we have the post which now has depth and dimension. Notice it's using the right and the left hand vanishing point to develop its uh, depth. And then also the, um, uh, the connecting piece there. So those kinds of things are um, the kinds of things you want to do. And let's also do the roof. Um, to add depth and dimension to a roof, I recommend extending the roof beyond kind of the normal edge of the roof. Because so, so, roofs usually overhang. They hang out beyond the uh, framework of the house. Here I'm just drawing edges that are parallel to the edges that I already have. And next I want to draw first kind of the, um, the front part of the roof that has has volume or depth that has that thickness to it okay so um, now I can take lines back to my vanishing point to show the sides of the roof and of course you want the roof to overhang on this side as well so extend it out beyond that edge as well so now my my new roof lines and um, might as well go ahead and delete the old roof lines so that we can see the new lines come into play. Oops, actually we want to keep that line because that defines the inside corner there where the roof meets the wall. Okay, so our new roof has lines that look like this. It has a front side to it which has some thickness and we've extended that thickness out just sort of beyond the wall of the house or the building and now we are using the left hand vanishing point to continue that line all the way back on both the right and the left hand side and then just kind of delete the parts that you would no longer see because they're now hidden by the overhanging roof and you're done.